Namaskar. Today we are going to make beguni, the famous beguni from Bengal, from the streets of Kolkata to our kitchen. Let's make beguni. It's a very simple dish, and it's mostly it's mostly served as a starter, and even during evening time with muri, and sometimes or even in the lunch time. especially on the day of ashtami uh, as an accompaniment as a fritter um, along with bhog the famous beguni with bhog so let's go start making it so basically we have to take a big black brinjal or a plant or aubergine whatever you say that is begun and this so you can see these these are quite translucent and you uh, uh, against the light if you see you can also see light through it so this has to be a thin slices which will be better fried and deep fried later on so just make sure to make it as thin as possible and now you can see how thin they are just for the reference i'll cut just a few slices so we have these nice thin slices of the begun and we'll be making beguni of now we are done with the begun now it's time to make the batter so for batter it's a very simple batter made out of besan or grounded roasted Uh, either moong or even chana mostly in india it's the chana dal powder or you can do even with moong dal powder whatever dal powder that you that you have you can use it for a twist people also do use rice flour to have the nice crunchiness to it but today as of now i am just showing you the authentic one with only beshon or besan or um chana powder so we first take the chana powder in a bowl so the amount is you can do it by your own um, idea uh, so as of now i just have used say 100 100 grams of chana powder and just to make it more flavorful i'll be adding some kalonji or kalo jeere these are nigella seeds they don't get confused with sesame these are nigella seeds black in color and often used in east indian cuisines mostly in bengal and uh, orissa and assam so i have sprinkled some nigella seeds along with that i'll give a pinch of hing which gives a nice aroma to it so this is asafoetida i'll be using just a pinch this much should be enough and just to have an added crisp crunch to it i'll add a little bit of cooking soda a little bit maybe a pinch or so okay Say this much amount it should be good enough. Just add the pinch, and then we'll mix it well using a whisk so that everything gets incorporated. Now to make a slurry out of it, we have to make a slurry out of it. So for the slurry, we'll be adding plain water. 
but just be careful don't make it too thin or not too thick so it should be of a relatively um, easy consistency flowing consistency i would say so that your um brinjals can nice nicely get coated with this uh, batter and while you are adding water keep on stirring the mixture so that it comes out evenly to make a smooth paste here you can see the paste is being formed just make sure there are no clumps in the in the way so that the clumps need to be taken care of by gently adding splashes of water and constantly whisking it so you whisk it constantly using a whisk or you can use even your hand blender right now i'm using this whisk because i'm more comfortable with it and it's not too cumbersome so you just want a very runny kind of batter which can evenly coat our even we coat our brinjal just incorporate everything together to make a nice running batter i think it's almost done it should have a flowing consistency so that the brinjal slices gets nicely coated and we'll have a very fine taste so this is done and we will go to the next step you can see the consistency yeah it's not too runny and not too thick as well so this is this should be the ideal consistency of the batter and we will go later on to see how we have to fry it now the curry is hot it's time to add the refined oil you can also add mustard oil if you wish but i am here using refined oil for deep frying so be generous in this step so now the oil is pretty hot you can find it by putting your hands over it and the brinjal slices are ready and so is the batter so it's time to fry it up and i'll show you the trick behind it so you just dip it in the slurry nicely coat both the sides and remove the excess of the batter from here and gently put it in the oil now there is a 10 seconds rule and the rule applies here just wait for a couple of seconds as soon as you think that the oil is pretty hot and the other side is done flip it gently and let it cook so it takes a couple of minutes from each side and it will be done when it's nice and golden from both the sides you can take it out in between you can also turn even you can see the nice golden color is coming as soon as it's getting brown see the other side is already turning brown it has swelled up as we see in the beguni in the chopped dokan which perfectly goes with muri or even along with bhog er khichdi whatever you like as an evening snack or during your ashtami bhog this accompaniment is a must try from bengal so now it has been around 2 minutes i have cooked 1 and 1/2 minutes to 2 minutes on either side i have cooked and fried it till it's nice and golden as we see in chopped dokan 
and it's time to take out from the oil just drain the excess oil here and anyways we'll be keeping it on a tissue so you can see how nice and crisp it has been you can see the crisp nice and crunchy from both the sides so this should be like the ideal beguni where it is fluffy it has air inside it so don't jump into having a bite you might burn yourself and this is the actual texture it should be very crisp this is because of the nice batter that we have made and the secrets behind making the batter and now it's time to show you just once again the other one how it looks so you just dip it drain the excess batter and time to go in the oil wait for the 10 seconds once it's 10 seconds then flip the side so it's the time to flip and now wait till it bulges and the air fills up in between both the sides so yeah enjoy this nice crispy beguni i can break it and show you how nice and crispy it has become to let you know there's no salt in here so don't forget to season it with some rock salt or beet noon kala namak and then serve hot and enjoy our beguni the final one is now ready and crisp as you can see it has become very nice and balloon like <laughs> from both the side it has swelled up and definitely it will taste awesome only thing you have to keep in mind after taking it out you can sprinkle some kala namak or beet noon as you get to see in the chopit dukan that they give kala namak on both sides and that will bring the taste back as you see so here is our beguni the famous beguni from bengal and enjoy this with your bhog khichdi or even with the evening snack with muri or chana chur or bhel puri whatever you feel like enjoy bye